Hey there folks, welcome to your DIY color wheel watercolor edition. Let's begin with a basic layout so our mixes make sense and we get a few different kinds of shapes to practice filling with paint. I'm going to start with a series of long kind of thin shapes that are opposite each other to create sort of a wheel and, and this wheel will need to have six spokes or sections. And in between each of these spokes, some sort of organic blob type shape will be more than sufficient. We begin with colors that you cannot make from any other colors. We call those primary colors, and they are red, blue, and yellow. We use those primary colors to create our secondary colors of green, orange, and violet. Begin by placing the labels for your primary colors equidistant from one another on the color wheel, red, blue, and then yellow, as I am doing here. Following that, use a little bit of common knowledge to realize that blue and yellow will give you green, which should be across from red. Follow this with violet between blue and red, and orange between red and yellow. Then those tertiary colors, which are those in between, I don't really have a name, but I'm just described by the basic colors that make me, such as red-orange, yellow-orange, yellow-green, followed by blue-green as we work our way around to blue-violet, and of course, lastly, red-violet. Now, as I get started here, there's actually many things to keep in mind. Um, one being, test your colors. You can see, even before I start with red, on my tester sheet on the left, I was testing out the value. Did I have enough pigment? versus the amount of water that I had. In addition to the value, you're also testing out the amount of pigment and water that you have on your brush because you don't want too much in that shape. Next, test your color. That's one of the main reasons you have a tester sheet. Is there too much red? Is there too much orange? Too much of one, not enough of the other, or vice versa is always going to be a killer. And with watercolor, once you get it on the page, you cannot get it off. The only thing you can do is make it darker. I'm just going to work my way around here, but notice that even with these light values, I'm going over it several times so that I get a nice smooth and even application and there are no brush strokes showing up. But I'm also getting a very nice, even, consistent edge that fills the shape without going over those borders. And what you'll notice right after I paint this green is I get a little lazy with the blue-green. It's, it's a little bit too light in value. I didn't have enough pigment in there. If that happens to you, don't fret. Just leave it alone once you get that initial even coat in there. Finish everything else and then come back and put a second coat on there. Now because I've been cleaning out my brush in between every color and then some, you'll notice that water is not very clean anymore. And if you don't use clean water, you will contaminate the colors that are in your watercolor pan. So make sure you're paying attention to all of these little details in order to have the most successful color wheel that you can. Now that our color wheel is complete, Use that bottom section that's left over on your page to draw nine shapes. We'll begin basically right in the middle of the page with three widish rectangles. Flank each of those rectangles with a square on each side. So that is three down the right-hand side, followed by three down the left-hand side. And now that I have these columns, let's label one warm, Let's label the far right hand side cool and neutral will go right in the middle. Now let's label our warm colors of red, orange, and yellow first. Well our cool colors need to go in a specific order. Across from red we will get green from our color wheel. Using those opposites we'll see that orange will give us blue for our second row and across from yellow we get violet. And at this point we have everything labeled. 
we're going to take our red and our green to create a neutral, the same with our blue and orange, and we're going to make another neutral out of yellow and violet. Now, from experience, I just happen to know that yellow and violet will give us a brown. Orange and blue will give us a brown. With the pigments that we have, this top one, red and green, is more like a grayish kind of a color. But first, clean water. And at this point, it's just more practice. We've already used all of these pure colors or hues up on the top. So we're just duplicating that now, again, here on the bottom. Clean edges, not too much water, not too little water, not too light or too dark. We want to make sure that we're just getting better control over our brush as we paint each of these warm and cool colors before we move on to mixing them together to get those neutrals that will go in those middle rectangles there at the bottom of the page. And now we're mixing our red and our green in order to get a neutral. Remember, this is gonna be more like a gray and test out your colors. That's clearly too green. So I need to add a little bit more red to it. Test, test, test until you get the right color. Don't expect it to come fast until you get some more practice. And then once it's correct, smooth, even application. Oh, and a little tip, make sure you mix enough color initially to fill that shape that you're painting. Now this perfect gray in between your red and your green, it's time to move on to that orange and blue. One very, very, very common mistake is for this to be too green, which just means you have too much blue in it. So again, test out your color ahead of time. In this instance, way, way too much orange. So gotta add a touch more blue to it in order to get that nice, perfect brown. But look at that. But we got it, so make sure you pay attention to the application. Yellow and violet. I will give you a hint to start with your yellow first because that purple or violet hue is way stronger. A little bit goes a long way, so make sure you're testing it out, which I have to do a few times before I can even come close to getting it correct. But then I noticed that I didn't mix up enough, so I kind of have to go back to the beginning, add some more yellow, add some more violet, mix it, test it, mix it, test it, and then I can start actually filling that last rectangle on the page with that beautiful neutral brown made from two complementary colors. And there you go, a DIY watercolor color wheel along with complementary colors used to mix neutral hues. So use this, go forth, paint, make something interesting, and have fun.